So welcome to your first unit of the year, acid, bases and salts. So I won't go into detail uh, with all the learning objectives, but these are the objectives that you need to reach by the end of the unit. So you need to go through these and make sure that you have understood all of the points. And if you don't, then come and see your classmates or myself. So first things first, what is an acid? So strong acids are corrosive. What they do is they basically eat away at things like metal, stone, and also your flash. That's why we need to be safe when we're using acids. Weak acids like lemon juice and vinegar also taste sour, which I'm sure you're aware of. Acid turns litmus red, and acids have a pH below 7. Okay, so anything below 7 is an acid. Acids contain the element hydrogen, but of course not all things that contain hydrogen are acids. Acids can be neutralized by alkalis, which means that they can be cancelled out basically. You can turn methyl orange red uh, with an acid, we'll learn more about methyl orange later. And finally you can turn the uh, chemical phenylphthalein colourless, and we'll be using these later in class to show that. Okay, so here is the example here, that's methyl orange and it's gone red. Acids are corrosive, they eat away at the skin. A lemon or citric acid is an example of an acid. And another example is hydrochloric acid, which we'll be using in the laboratory as well. So these are some common uh, laboratory acids, hydrochloric, sulfuric, and nitric acids. We also have the chemical formulas there and also the salts that they form. So if you react hydrochloric acid with a base, it will give chlorides. Sulfuric acid with a base will give sulfates. And nitric acid with a base, it will give nitrates. Okay, so we've looked at acids. So now what is a base? Well, a base, just like an acid, if it's strong enough, it will be corrosive. It will eat away at things like metals, stone, and your flash. It will turn litmus paper blue. And bases have a pH above 7. Okay, acids were below, bases are above. Bases contain hydroxide, OH minus, ox, the element oxygen, or carbonate, CO3 2 minus. However, just as the case with acids, not all compounds that have oxygen are bases. Bases that can be can also be neutralized by acids, just as acids can be neutralized by bases. And a base soluble in water is called an alkali. More about that later. Uh, it turns methyl orange yellow and turns phenylphthalein pink. Okay, so here's some examples here. This is a, a basic solution, which looks like litmus has been dropped in there. So it's gone blue. They're corrosive. Uh, common cleaning products like Janola. Uh, also um, base bases, uh, containing bleach. Or ammonia and this is a bottle of sodium hydroxide. So common bases we use in the laboratory are sodium hydroxide, calcium carbonate and ammonia. We'll learn more about that in more detail. So there's some um, uh, sodium hydroxide, that's the calcium carbonate powder and some ammonia solution which stinks. Okay so it's kind of the smell of babies nappies. So I mentioned alkalis in the last uh, slide. So a base which is soluble in water is called an alkali. Okay, and these include metal oxides like calcium oxide, ammonia, NH3, and metal hydroxide, hydroxides like sodium hydroxide and lithium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide. And there's also a video to watch. In this video, In this we're, video going we're going to learn about, about what makes things alkaline, or, alkaline or, basic. or basic. Alkaline materials, alkaline materials are usually used to make cleaning products, products, products like, soap, like soap and ceramics, and ceramics such, as tiles. such as tiles. They neutralize they acids, 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 acids so can be used so to use digestion, 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 remove harmful gases from industrial chimneys that contribute to acid rain.
To test for an alkali, test for an alkali expose it to red litmus paper. paper. An alkali, an alkali should turn paper, should paper, blue. paper blue. An alkali, an alkali is considered an ionic compound, an ionic compound made using the positively charged cations of alkali or alkali earth, earth metals, metals, metals groups 1 groups and 2 of the periodic table. table. A broader definition is any base that dissolves in water. And in this case, ammonia is also an alkali. All alkalis are bases, but not all bases are alkalis. A base for a base slippery aqueous solution tastes bitter, taste bitter, has a pH above a 7, pH above and reacts with acids reacts to form salts. Form salts. There are many definitions, are many definitions for bases. In Arrhenius in theory, 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 a base dissociates in water, water to form hydroxide, form hydroxide ions. ions. The Arrhenius, the Arrhenius definition, definition, definition is a very narrow, a very narrow definition, definition in which only hydroxides, which only hydroxides are, basic. are basic. We can see that bases see react with acids to produce water and salt. In Lewis, theory, in Lewis theory, a base is an a electron, is an pair, electron donor. pair donor. The Lewis definition, the Lewis definition is a very broad is definition, broad definition in which a wide which range of chemical, chemical behaviour may be described, may be described as, basic as basic behaviour. Basic behavior. In Bronsted Lowry, Bronsted theory, Lowry theory, a base is a, a base proton, is a proton, proton or H plus ion acceptor. acceptor. Let's stick with Let's this, stick this definition. Notice that Notice all of these equations, all of these are, equations equilibria. are equilibria. Kb is the KB equilibrium for the base reaction and describes, describes the extent of H plus uptake by, by the base. Kb is equal to the concentration of Hb plus over the concentration, over concentration of, of, B of B times the concentration of H plus. H plus. The higher Kb, the, higher KB, the greater the, the extent, greater the extent of, H of H plus uptake, so the stronger the base. Kb is associated with the pH scale. We use pH we to, use tell, pH us to tell us how strong acids and bases, bases are, bases are. Usually, on a scale, usually on a scale of 1 to 14, 1 to 14 where 7 is neutral, seven is neutral like, water. like water. There are many kinds, are many of, indicators kinds of indicators of pH scale. Phenol failure is a good indicator for alkalis. For alkalis. It turns from it clear turns to pink at around pH 10. Whereas methyl whereas orange, methyl orange is, not so good. is not so good. It undergoes it its color changes below pH 7. Mostly, Mostly, universal indicators are used because it has a full spectrum of colours for pH indicating. Strong alkalis include hydroxides, hydroxides carbanions, carbanions, amides, amides and hydrides, and hydrides group one metals. Group one metals. Sodium, hydride Sodium hydride is known as a superbase. Super Strong bases Strong are, very are very dangerous. Why do you think this Why is? Do you think this is? Strong bases strong are very reactive, are very reactive thus they are and thus they are corrosive. Many cleaning Many fluids, cleaning are, strong fluids bases. are strong bases. Organic alkalis Organic are usually alkalis weaker. Are usually weaker. Very weak very alkalis weak alkalis alkalis chemicals like ammonia, like ammonia which use their lone pair of electrons, of electrons to, accept to accept protons. They do not dissociate, do not dissociate in water, water to give a negative charge iron, so iron, the bond to so H, bond to H, bond to H plus is weaker. So here's just a, a short cartoon illustrating how to neutralize bases, okay, uh, just to break up things. So you notice there was lots of things about indicators. So an indicator is a dye which changes color according to whether it is acidic or alkaline, okay. So for example, litmus is an indicator that is red in acid and blue in alkali, okay. So uh, we'll probably tend to use litmus paper in the laboratory, which is more uh, effective and cheaper. And litmus is available as both a liquid, which can be added into the solution. So you'll notice too that uh, universal indicator was mentioned in the video. Okay, so litmus will tell you whether a solution is acidic or alkali, but it won't tell you how acidic or alkali the solution is. And that's where we use universal indicator, which has a whole range of different colors which will determine the general pH. Okay, so you've got a whole range from dark red all the way to lilac. Okay, so a strong acid is going to be in the red area, a strong alkali is going to be in the kind of purple lilac area. So the more acidic it goes, it is going from green down to red, and the more alkali going from green to up to lilac. Okay, so this attaches a number to called the pH value to each universal indicator value. It's an illustration of how strong or weak an acid is. So pH 7 is neutral, pH 1 is strongly acidic, and pH 14 is strongly alkali.
So we can kind of have a rough idea how strong an acid or, or an alkali is based on the colour or universal indicator. Okay, so that's kind of the range that's given. So strong acids, one, two, three, are reddish. Strong <coughs> alkali, uh, 12, 13, 14, are purplish. Okay, so it was also mentioned that acids can neutralise alkalis, and alkalis can neutralise acids. So bases, usually uh, the metal hydroxides, the metal oxides, and the metal carbonates. Hydroxides contain OH in their formula. Metal oxides contain O. Uh, for example, uh, so sodium oxide. Okay, and the following general word equation describes neutralization reactions. Acid plus base gives salt plus water. So neutralization essentially is a chemical reaction where equal amounts of the acid are added to equal amounts of the base. So they kind of cancel each other out, they're neutralized, leaving only salt, which has a neutral pH, and water, which of course also has a neutral pH of 7. The solution goes from being either acidic or alkali to be neutral. Uh, other kind of reactions that you need to know are uh, acid plus carbonates gives salt plus water plus carbon dioxide. Acid plus metal oxide gives salt and water. And acid plus metal gives salt and hydrogen. Okay, so oxides were also mentioned. So an oxide is a compound made of oxygen and another element. So for example, sodium oxide or nitrogen dioxide. They're both oxides. One is bonding, oxygen is bonding to a non-metal, one is bonding to a metal. Okay, the acidic oxides, which are these guys in blue, um, like sulfur dioxide, are reacted with water to form acids. That's why they're called acidic. And a basic oxide, which is these guys here, these metals predominantly, like calcium oxide, okay, they react with water to form um, bases. Okay, so an oxide that combines with water to give an acid is called an acidic oxide, okay, which are these guys on this side of the table, and conversely, those which form basic oxides are, are called, uh, well, called form bases in water are called basic oxides. Pretty straightforward. Okay, so also in that video was a mention of the Bronsted Lowry theory. Uh, which involves something called proton transfer. And you can see from the diagram what that means. So in proton transfer, one molecule loses a proton and another gains it. Okay, so here we have the acid is uh, losing a proton and the base is then gaining that proton. Okay, and in this particular model, uh, the one that loses a proton is called an acid and the one that gains a proton is called a base. Okay, so that's pretty much acids and bases. So we'll also look now at the products that form, the salts that form when acids and, and alkalis um, react. So usually when an ionic compound dissolves in water, it breaks apart into ions, well, it does. However, uh, sometimes you'll get a precipitation reaction because the, the strength of the bonds between the uh, different ions is stronger than the strength of the bonds between the ions and the water. Okay, and this is an example here of a precipitation reaction, um, which is the reaction between sodium chloride, table salt, and silver nitrate. Okay, so I'll leave that for you to watch. Okay, so salt solubility rules. So these are important, you need to know these rules, okay? So basically it's saying that all hydroxides um, are soluble um, if they're sodium, potassium, ammonium, and calcium. All the rest are insoluble. Uh, sodium oxide, potassium, and calcium oxide are all soluble, the rest are all insoluble. Sodium, potassium, ammonium, carbonate are all soluble, all the rest are not. And all nitrate are soluble, that's an important rule. Uh, lead and barium are insoluble, sulfate, all others are soluble, and silver and lead um, is chlorides are insoluble, all the rest are soluble. So you need to learn these rules. Okay, and to help you, I'm going to give you some examples here. 
So uh, sodium sulfate is it insoluble or soluble? Okay. So from your rules, you should have known that sodium uh, salts are soluble. So sodium sulfate will be soluble. Copper hydroxide. Uh, you would know that copper two salts are insoluble as hydroxides. Um, only um, sodium, potassium, and calcium hydroxide are soluble. So that must mean that copper hydroxide is insoluble. Mercury chloride is uh, chloride. So all chlorides are soluble except for those of silver and lead. So mercury chloride is soluble. Ammonium phosphate is an ammonium salt, so it will be soluble because all ammonium compounds are soluble. And chromium sulfide, if we look that one up, that's uh, chromium metal, it's going to be insoluble it's for experts. And lead sulfate, it's a lead salt, so it's going to be insoluble. So the next thing you have to do is be able to work out how to prepare salts if you're given um, a certain acid or a certain base. Okay? Because obviously certain salts you're going to make are going to be insoluble and some are going to be soluble. So as we've said, salts are prepared by reacting an acid with a metal or a alkali. Uh, interchangeable use of the word alkali with base. And the acid provides the non-metal for the ion for the salt. And the metal or base provides the metal ion for the salt. So the metal will depend on the solubility of the base you are using. So is it already in solution or is it insoluble? the solubility of the salt to be made and all acids are aqueous solutions so you don't have to worry about um, if it's going to be insoluble or not but the solubility of the base is important. So in terms of preparing um, salts we'll look at three main methods okay so for a metal or an insoluble base like a carbonate for example uh, reacting with an acid to produce a soluble salt you'll use filtration and probably a bit of evaporation for an alkali reacting with an acid to produce a soluble salt, titration is used, which we'll look at in a little bit more detail. And then for an alkali reacting with an acid to produce an insoluble salt, you've got a two-stage process involving filtration and then drying. So let's look at uh, preparing from an insoluble base, for example, a metal or, say, a, a metal oxide. Okay, so first stage is that the excess base which is insoluble, is reacted with the acid uh, to form the salt. Now, obviously, you've got the unreacted uh, base still there, so it needs to be filtered out. Okay, so in the first stage, uh, in this example, insoluble copper 2 oxide is added until no more visible reaction can be seen. Okay, uh, the base is no longer reacting. Okay, the mixture is then filtered, which is seen in stage 2, to remove excess black solid of the copper oxide to leave a blue solution which is placed in an evaporating bowl, which will evaporate over time to leave wonderful crystals of the desired salt. Okay, so this is a soluble salt from an insoluble base. Okay, so in terms of preparing from a soluble base, an alkali, the problem with this is that the reaction with a soluble base and an acid, you won't see when the reaction is actually completed, do you? Because you don't see bubbles reacting with your insoluble base um, being reacted up. Okay, so you won't know if you've got excess base. So this is where we have the indicator. Okay, so it will change color when there's been a change in pH, when it's gone from the acidic solution into the alkali solution. Okay, the indicator is added, so the acid to be one color, and then you keep on adding the base until the indicator changes, illustrating you have an excess of the base. Okay, more base than acid. Okay, so for example, if you use phenylphthalein, you'll start off, your solution will be colorless, and then it will go to purple as you've added the excess base. So you know you've now got enough. You've made all the salt you can make. And methyl orange goes from red and then goes into yellow once you know you've added more base than acid. So you've made the salt. So in terms of titrations, um, the acid is measured using a pipette and a conical flask. And a drop of indicator is added. If you don't know what these words mean, I'm going to demonstrate it in class. So that should ease your worried mind. Okay, and something called a burette is attached to a clamp stand and the burette is filled up with a solution of the base. Uh, the base is added from the burette until the indicator changes color. And then the volume of the base required can be read from the burette 
Okay, so this is the burette here, so it can be read from the burette. Okay, and once this has been determined, the experiment can be run this time without the indicator, so you get the nice crystals without the indicator being inside the crystals. Because the volume of the base required to be added for the urette has been recorded, so that will produce the colourless solution, which you know will contain your soluble salt. Okay, and this solution can be heated to encourage crystals to form. Okay, so you just evaporate down the water and give you your lovely crystal.